Hello, Eva here with Eva Love Arts, and today I'm going to show you how I created this painting with Silks Acrylic Glazes. First, I'll begin with a masked off border on a Canson watercolor board, and I start by sketching the face slightly with a pencil. I'm using an HP pencil, but you can use any pencil that you like to draw with, and I'll be using a needleable eraser to fix any mistakes that I make. I'm working from a photograph and I find that certainly when it comes to coloring, for me, having a photograph to work from is necessary. I'm just not that good yet. <laughs> so uh, maybe the great masters could paint from memory or just from their imagination. And I can certainly do that for abstract paintings. And it's not like this is thoroughly realistic either, but still I find it very helpful to have something I can use as a reference. And now that I have that roughed in, I'll be using my Stabilo All Pencil, but you can use India ink or even acrylic paint would work just as well. I just want to make sure that it is something that is permanent when dry. Next, I'll activate the Stabilo All Pencil with a water brush and I'll be setting in the gray tones, just spreading out the ink, I guess, if you will, of the pencil. And this method of creating a monochromatic underpainting is known as grisaille. And basically it helps to lay the foundation of the glazing process. Now that my underpainting is complete, I will go ahead and add some color with these silks acrylic glazes. And I'm starting off with my lightest color, which is the Mango Mamba. And I'll help that color flow by adding some water. I'm also using two different sized round brushes throughout this painting, a size 6 and 10. These are Italian brushes though, so I'm not sure how they compare to US brushes. Silks are perfect for creating beautiful layers and that's because they're transparent so layering them adds a lot of color and depth to the painting. So next I'm going to add some Guatemalan green and overlaying it with the Mango Mamba creates a really pretty green. Just creating this halo effect in the background. And then next I'll add Mediterranean Blue, making sure to overlap the Guatemalan Green. And just basically filling in that background. And now I'll add some Mingo Mamba to the face and hair. And this will end up being the lightest parts after the other colors are added. So definitely working from lightest to darkest when glazing is something I would suggest that's 
a lot easier to add color than to take away color when you're glazing. So next um, I'll add a little Mediterranean blue to the girl's top with a lot of water and I think I missed I was talking whenever I added some ginger peach but now I'm adding in some plumeria to the face and hair as well and when I'm painting in that hair I make sure to follow the direction that the hair actually goes in I'm going to darken up the edges and the border with some sapphire on ice and just blending that into the Mediterranean blue and then also decided to work that into the blouse that she's wearing as well and then I will bring in some autumn leaf to the hair using a small round brush for the details. And then I'll add some of that Mingo Mamba to the highlights on the face, just blending and creating more layers. Adding some ginger peach to the shadows. And then I'll mix this Guatemalan green and sapphire and ice I had there and just add it to the background. And here I decided to add some plumeria into the blouse. I, she had a lot of warmth going on and it was just too different, that shirt on her. So I had the background which was cool and she is more warm so I wanted to bring some of that warmth into her shirt. There I added some iridescent gold, which you can only see really when the light hits it just right, but uh, it's a nice little effect. And now I'm taking some black ice, and I'm using that to color in the darkest areas of the shadows. And this just basically adds more contrast and actually makes the other colors seem bolder and brighter in contrast. So I'll just use those sparingly. Now what do you do when you accidentally drop some water on the background and it lifts some of the paint up? Well you add more and you make it look like you planned it. So there's a cool little effect and I'll go ahead and add some more Mediterranean blue to the background. Adding it on top of the yellow it looks a little more green but that's okay because this is just fun and part of the glazing is adding lots of layers so so I actually probably could have added a whole lot more layers and created even more depth but I'm limited on time so I'm going to add some sapphire on ice to the background here in the corners and blend that in and I'm almost done
So now I'm just touching up some areas with the black ice, adding some definition where I think it's needed, and just fussing basically. But now's the fun part. I get to rip off the masking tape and reveal that clean border, which is one of my favorite parts. And then, of course, I was like, oh wait, uh, I should probably add a little more color to the lips. So I'll do that and then I'll be done. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think this girl is thinking. Um, what's her story? What does this painting say to you? And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have as well. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.